It has definitely got 220,000 miles on it, and honestly, there's no way <laughs> that it was cooling properly at this point. So, um, here's the new one. Hey guys, uh, Joel from Malicious Mischief, uh, here to show you how to change the radiator in a 2002 uh, Chevy Suburban. This is a 2500 and uh, this radiator is the same for uh, 2000 to 2006 um, Suburbans and it's the same as the uh, same Silverado pickup trucks. So um, going to be just a touch different because this is a Suburban but um, all of the connections and everything that I'm going to show you are going to be exactly the same. So uh, we're about to dive into it, but just a heads up for my subscribers, uh, you can see uh, Project uh, High Boy behind me. We are taking a break from that to get the radiator changed on this because this needs to tow that to the um, electronics shop so that they can have some proprietary electronics taken out of it uh, that the person who sold it to me uh, needs back. So um, got to get this uh, fixed up so it can tow and then we're going to flat tow uh, Project High Boy. If you're interested in Project High Boy, I'll link it above here. All right, so the Suburban is leaking from its radiator, and you can't really see it because it's dark, but it's leaking right down there. It's actually leaking at the housing on the radiator, and as I was mentioning, the only way to pressure test these is from here. So we put the pressure tester on this, got it pressured up nice and tight, and then listened for where the bubbles were coming out. And they were all coming out of the radiator on the tank right here. You can actually see a little bit on the side there. It is, um, it's just old. So this is the original radiator. I've owned this truck since it was new, and um, I've never put a radiator in it. So we're going to do that now. Uh, over here is our rock auto radiator um this is got the exact same connections as everything as um the factory one but it was about uh 150 dollars cheaper than what the uh what chevy wanted so let's get it in all right so first thing is we got this uh plastic piece you don't strictly have to remove this to be able to change this radiator um, but I did as part of the diagnosing, so we're going to go ahead and pull it off. But I wanted to show you that that was on there from before. Now the next thing we got to do is take off this fan shroud. This fan shroud is two pieces. There's some very small uh, clips on here, and you just got to pop the clips apart. And then you unscrew here, 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 and here, and this thing will come apart. These are the clips right here. You just put this. See, that one's a little broken, but... You put this underneath here and pop those out. Like that, like that. Okay, and there are four of those clips. One right here, one back underneath here, one right there. You can see that one's out already. And then one more right back under there, which is hidden in the shadows. And then we gotta get these bolts right here. One, two, three, four. So in mine, this is a 10 millimeter. Yours should be the same. So go ahead and start there. All right, for ease of access, we're gonna go ahead and take off this intake, uh, just the tube here, because it's just two screws and it comes right off. It makes it easier to get to the rest of this stuff. Okay, next the fan does need to come off and you can't get this bottom half out until the fan's out of the way. Okay, and this is not reverse thread, it's normal. So it goes on exactly the way a normal bolt would. Uh, so righty tighty lefty loosey, we went to the left, not the cums. Once you've got that loosened up, this will just walk right off of there. Okay, and if 
Your viscous coupling is bad. This is an excellent time to replace it. These are not super expensive. Uh, if your fan's always running high, making a ooh noise even when it's not super hot out, your viscous coupling went bad. Um, also, if it's uh, having cooling problems because it's not spinning when it's hot, viscous coupling went bad. So, easy to replace. All right, with that out of the way, this bottom section comes out. And that gives us access to the radiator. Now you can see for the radiator, we've got two transmission cooler lines over there. Here and here, we're gonna have to undo those. We've also got, uh, this line goes over here to the reservoir and this line goes back to the heater core. Uh, both of those are gonna have to come off. Lower radiator hose right down here, that has to come off. Over on this side, we've got, um, oh, let's see, uh, engine oil cooler or something else, not sure what those are. Uh, I believe this is a 2500 only thing, so you might not have these, but um, both of those are gonna have to come out, and then we've got our upper radiator hose there. Okay, so let's get to pulling all that stuff out. All right, and before we do anything, we need to drain this um, radiator. Right down here, you can see is the, let's see if I can get you a better picture of that. Um, right down there is the petcock for draining the radiator. So we're gonna get a uh, catch bin underneath that and we'll open that up. Okay, well that's draining, we're gonna go ahead and pull these uh, top hoses. And on with that. All right, we're taking off rubber hoses, especially older ones that have been in place for a really long time. Uh, one of these tools uh, is super helpful because it can get in there. What happens is the rubber vulcanizes to the plastic. It actually bonds itself to it. It's not a super strong bond, but it's going to be really hard to twist it off. So getting this in to break it can be super helpful. Okay, on these hoses, there is a little C-clip that holds them in place. You gotta take that out. So, let's get you a better view here. Okay, you can see that right there. There's this little plastic cover on it. All right, so we gotta take out the battery so that we can slide this. We need just a little bit more clearance on this side to be able to get the radiator out on this side and then it'll slide out on the other side. Um, always on these GM side posts or really any battery, disconnect the negative first because the positive is tucked over here on the side next to the uh, fender and if you do that one first you run a real good chance of arcing the battery against the fender and you do not want to do that. We're going to take out the air cleaner so that we can get to this platform underneath and remove that because there's not enough room to get this radiator out otherwise. Three bolts.
bolts on this brace, plus where it's tied into the uh, side here. I guess where it's pushed in on the inner fender, disconnect it from the inner fender. Okay, that gets this brace out, which then allows you to get to the radiator. Okay, with that out of the way, we can get this last hose off. I couldn't get that bottom one, so I disconnected it from the water pump, and it's just going to go with us. Put this one we can reach now. All right, so there's the old radiator out. You can see it has definitely got 220,000 miles on it. And honestly, there's no way <laughs> that it was cooling properly at this point. So um, here's the new one. Like I said, we got this from Rock Auto. Um, something that you'll notice is for some reason, Chevy shrank down the core on this. I know that prior to my truck, you could get them a little thicker. I went back to the thick style um, because this truck needs all the cooling it can get with the uh, amount of towing and stuff that we do with it. So you notice all of the um, connections and everything are exactly the same. You always want to match those up and make sure that you're not um, uh, not trying to put anything in that doesn't match up, but these look great. We just got a little bit more cooling from being thicker. Let's go ahead and get this new one in. This transmission cooler, these are the, um, that's the heater core and that is the overflow. So um, we're gonna go ahead and hook up to those. And then on this side, um, those connectors are actually too big for my truck. Mine needs eights, so. Uh, this radiator came with new mounting uh, rubbers, which is awesome. It also came with these in case you have the smaller oil cooler fittings, which I do. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect those. Um, something that's important, do not disconnect the top and the bottom at the same time. The oil cooler will fall down inside the radiator. Undo the top, put the new one in, undo the bottom, put the new one in, then you're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick.
that's it. It's all changed. Brand new radiator. Um, if you found this useful, uh, like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Really appreciate it. Uh, you're going to see the link at the end of this to the uh, high boy again, and uh, would love to check it out. So thanks a lot. Uh, I love you. Take care. Not a fan of the GM clips. They may be easy for robots to get on, they are not easy for people to get off. They seem to fight you no matter what you do. Okay, and this is reverse thread. That is super important to remember. Um, it goes on the opposite way, the way you would think. Okay, and this is not reverse thread, it's normal. So it goes on exactly the way a normal bolt would. Uh, so righty-tighty, lefty-loosey.